Hi, the topic today is bass drumone, and this is going to be a little different. I'm doing an introductory video because I'm a tenor drumone player. I don't play bass drumone. It would make no sense for me to try and play it for you. It wouldn't sound good. And that describes where we are in trombone playing, it, that this is a totally different instrument, tenor trombone versus bass trombone. It's not the same as the woodwind family, where it's very common for a soprano, a B-flat clarinet player, to play bass and go back and forth, or even saxophone. The standard instrument is uh, alto, but saxophone players go back and forth between tenor, berry, soprano all the time. It's common. It's not common on tenor and bass trombone. Once a bass trombone player decides to become a bass trombonist, that's it. They have a very different instrument and they have very different music. So there are three kinds of trombones, just to recap. Student trombone, a large bore tenor, which is a professional instrument, and a bass trombone. The differences are in size. With a student horn, the bore, measured right here, is a little under half an inch. It's 0.475 up to 0.4. 490. Also takes a small mouthpiece, small shank, and it has a seven or a seven and a half inch bell. It produces a small sound that is not really what we want nowadays in modern trombone playing. We want a big, rich, warm, dark sound. You get that when you go to the second instrument, which is a large bore tenor. That's this. It's a professional model. When a student buys their first horn, it should be this. After they get off the student instrument, this is what they want. The bore size is 0.547, which may sound yeah. not like too much of a difference, but it really is. It really blows differently. 0.547 bore, eight and a half inch bell, a large shank mouthpiece, student horns a small shank, and the mouthpiece is significantly bigger, and an F attachment, which is invaluable nowadays. The third instrument is bass drumone. This is simply everything I just said, but even larger. A bore size of 0.562, sometimes bigger. Bell diameter of nine to nine and a half inches. I've even seen some bases with 10 inch, which are now that's approaching euphonium size almost. A very deep mouthpiece, which is large shank. And not only an F attachment, but a second valve, which is pitched, believe it or not, in G. It works independently of the first valve and gives you a second set of alternate positions. You have the F attachment alternates and you have the second valve attachment alternate positions. This can be confusing. So I've asked Josh to do a video and he will play the bass trombone and also describe how the valves work much better than I will. This is simply an introduction. Nowadays, having a bass trombone in a band or an orchestra is standard and necessary. The standard orchestra trombone section is a first tenor, a second tenor, and a bass trombonist. In band, same thing. Tenor trombone one, tenor trombone two, bass trombone. Jazz band, three trombones, tenor one, two, three, and bass. And I've seen quite a few pieces of concert band music with that same instrumentation. Tenor one, two, three, bass. And the bass trombone is, uh, the part is quite different. It almost looks like a tuba part. So you need to have a bass trombonist in your band. This is very, very important. For sure, if it's a high school band, you need to have a bass trombonist playing those bass trombone parts. This can be a little strange at first because you may find a third trombone part where there are a lot of notes below the staff. That's the bass trombone range. Well, then that's a bass trombone part, but somebody labeled it trombone three. Uh, unfortunately, you'll see quite a few bands, and I have, where, as is typical with most bands, you put the stronger player on the first part and the weakest player on the third part. That means you have a weak tenor trombone player, usually on a student horn without an F attachment, trying to play a bass trombone part. It's impossible, and it can't be done. You'll need to have a bass player on that. This is especially true with the cornerstone band literature, the two Holt suites, the Von Williams folk song suite, and so on. These really are true bass trombone parts. Anyway, how do you get a bass trombonist in your band? Well, what you don't want to do is take your weakest player and turn that kid into a bass trombone because then you have, honestly, a weak bass trombonist. Probably don't want to take your first player either because 
That's the person you need playing the first Jerome parts. So think about this. What do the second, third, and fourth Jerome players look like in terms of their low register? They have a good open low register. That may be the kid plays bass Jerome. I would approach the student and have them try it. Now, that means that the school needs to own a bass Jerome. You can't expect a kid to become a bass Jermonist and then spend $2,000 to buy the instrument any more than you expect your potential bass clarinet player to go out and buy a bass clarinet. A bass Jermon should be an instrument that the school owns. So find a kid, let them try that instrument. Uh, I would suggest for starting on bass Jermon, give the kid a beginning level tuba book. In other words, accent on achievement for tuba or the uh, Kenyan Breeze Easy book for tuba. Something very simple. Literally the first page is a whole note F below the staff. And just have them play it. You don't need to teach them, just have them play it. Uh, give them a good F attachment position chart where they can start. I find that most kids learn the second vowel positions on their own. And honestly, I'm not really up on that much either because it is a very different instrument. But have them uh, play the tuba book and make sure you do pieces in your band that have bass trombones because otherwise why bother? But I think this is uh, something that is standard instrumentation. When a composer writes a piece, they assume a bass trombone player will be down there. That's it for an introduction on bass trombone. Enjoy Joss's video. He's done this uh, a number of years for me. He always does a great job.